Okay. So up to his Gimel, page 151, if you have the Sefer. So he's, he's explaining that Shmei Rabba, the great name, is explained that in contrast to the name of a person that has some kind of intrinsic shaykhist to the person. The, by the Abish's great name, we mean Kirl Yocha, that is, there's actually no limit at all in any way to his expression. And for that matter, he doesn't even have to express himself. All things by very nature make their presence known because they exist in the world where there are other things. But the Abishta doesn't exist in any place or space. And I mean that physically, I mean even spiritually. It creates all of that. So the shame of the Abishta is who Shmei Bulvad, that is the uh, absolute pure potential for everything. Which means that there's nothing identifiable there. There isn't anything other than he alone. And this is the Shmei Rabba. This, this the incredible thing is that this is the whole Kavona is to be Mamshil that into the world. That notwithstanding there's a creation and a whole Seder Shalos. And all the way down to Elam Haza, La'alam, 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 Maya, Yisbarech, that down here should be revealed the truth that the embassy is there's nothing besides him and it's all totally nullified to him. And this is nothing other than the consequence of his desire, which could have been, which is infinite, could, could have been anything and nothing. And it's this. So this is still anything and nothing. But it's everything because Hashem so desired. So I just want to relate something to what was said earlier in his base about, he talked about, about Maise, that all of Ishtavashalus is God's works, God's action to bring out how external and negligible an expression of God it is, separate, meaning to say non-expressive of, at all of who he is, just like an act. You know, you're walking in the street and you're, you, as you walk on the street, you leave a mark on the, on the sand or, or you crush a little stone just to cite an example that's entirely unexpressive of who, who you are anything can do that it's most external but the obvious point is and that's the whole point that in this external world like actions can be endowed with the greatest significance and meaning per se it's, they're nothing but an action that is a mitzvah action becomes everything at any rate, the main point being conveyed here is that through our void that we bring down the Yehesh, the, the Abish is a great name, he went to this world. Where are we up to? I'm sorry, we're up to, uh, we're well way into his Gimel. Yeah, page 152. So the mind explained in detail how the, the very creative force itself, the final pro actual, the actual manifest creative force is Malchus. And Malchus itself, like the Koyach HaMais of a person, is completely insignificant and, and non-expressive of, of the, the value of a person. Again, a simple act. A daimim can also, so an animal can act. And we leave our mark on the most external aspect of the world, the diamond. We leave your mark on the inanimate object. So to Malchus um, is the most removed externally, manifestedly, expression of Hashem. It tells you nothing of him. God can speak. Malchus is God can speak. God's not a speaker. Something beyond all this. We said yesterday, beyond creator altogether. So not only is Malchus, but even Chachma. That's what we started to learn now. Even the highest level of the spheres, the oitzes, we start again by the oitzes, it's two thirds down. The oitzes, we all, everybody's with me? The oitzes, yeah. The oitzes, she gam begin, it's a chachm, she be maise bereishis. Even chachm, in the process of, which, which is part of many steps back, but part of the whole creative process, but a very lofty level. 
Shashirish Malchus in the Chachma, and Malchus ultimately is rooted in Chachma, Kamayim and Abba Yosset Brata, because it says in that the father founds literally the daughter. He's in the relationship between the father and the daughter and the mother and the son, as explained even in Nigla. Right? Ishmaz Yitchili led his bas, Ishmaz Mazras Tchili led his bai. You led his you led his ben. At any rate, we'll leave that aside. So who would begin this asiyah? So even Chachma is, is like asiyah in the sense of, again, push it to language. Looking at Chachma tells you absolutely nothing of who God is. Notwithstanding its extraordinary revelation. So it's like asiyah. Everything is made with Chachma. And the Pasuk is associating Chachma with Asisa. You're making with Chachma. You make with your hands. No. You make with Malchus, whatever. But uh, the Pasuk is hinting that even Chachma is an act. A very external expression. External, the merest, not just external, non-expressive of who the Abishta is, per se. But again, in, in parenthesis, God grants his acts or the potential for his works, the greatest significance, when Yid comes along and reveals Yehesh made up. In other words, when we through our void, reveal down here this emes that it's all bottled, it's all insignificant. And it's only Maile is that it's God's desire that it be. That's what mitzvahs do. Mitzvahs grant and reveal God's essential desire for the world, that it makes the world everything. The most basi laganya chesi kala becomes God's bridal chamber, no less. Not at Silas, and not Elam Akudim, the Kudim of Rudim, which is at Silas, Rudim is at Silas. None of them are his bridal chamber, Dafka Elam Hazza, but that's only through the Avoid of Yehesh Mirabba, which is in the context of the Mayim, expressive of the whole objective and effect of Avoid. So back to now understanding Ishtaushal is per se pre Avoid. Or after these words, she, in the side, is. Shari Abba Yonik Mimazala. Says in Zoya that Abba, which is Chachma, derives its nourishment, is sustained, means its source is Mazal. And Mazal means merely a dripping down, a very faint glimmer of godly expression. In the words of the Mayne Bechina Saitis Bulvat, like hairs. Like the hairs we see in a person. Shachai Shabem that the life force is very minute and is drawn into them. Speaking now the head, the, uh, the, the hair of the, of the head. It's the nourishment comes to them via the, sc- the skull. The skull interrupts. That's like, the, that's the tzimtzum. The skull interrupts between the life force and the hairs which, which come post or after the skull. Which means the skull which is expression of the symptom means that the life force that is invested in, in here in the situs is extremely uh, small. So little is the life force there that the hair has no feeling. When a person cuts his hairs, he won't feel pain at all. Okay, I'm not going to this whole thing here, but the Nazi doesn't cut his hair. That's because he's mamshich. In the side is this pro- profound godly awareness, and therefore it could even be physical pain. At any rate. The rugged sober. That's what they say. So likewise, Abba comes, Chachma comes from Mazel, meaning to say that what produces Chachma is this very faint, very, very little investor. Shochai is nivdal, it's a life force that is separate from God himself. By separate we mean in its own ex- expression of who God is. Habaya the hefsek, and it comes through the great Simpson. So even Chachma is what is like Maise. Even Chachma, again, Chachma doesn't tell you who God is. You look at Chachma, you see this wise, intelligent being. That's not who he is. Something he gave rise to. It's a decision to manifest himself that way. But himself is utterly beyond. And therefore can be uh, appropriately termed like a, a work, a deed of his. 
like a, a simple act per se, without endowing it with value, is absolutely tells you nothing of a human being. Just to clarify, you know, if there's a mark on the ground, you look at that mark, that tells you human being made it. It could be made by anything. A simple mark, a simple scratch, a simple act does not tell you the act itself, does not tell you anything of the, of the one who did it. So even Chachma tells you nothing of who the Avish did it. it it's the merest, merest expression. We're not finished yet. This is, he's going to up the ante, going higher and higher and higher, and it's all insignificant. That'll be the end. Continuing now, probing deeper into higher and higher nishtalshalus, and recognizing that notwithstanding its glorious manifestation, relative to us, it's incredible. It's godly, it's divine, it's revelation, it's, it's so great, in fact, that, that Atzilis is a Atzillus would, would totally blow us away. He's going to go to Atzillus and beyond Atzillus. And all of that is all like I see it. It's all merely our order. So continuing now the journey. The Milo Yosin Igam calls Gilo Yakav. The whole Gilo of the Kav. What's the Kav? So to remind you, this is quoting from the classic. Uh, Say for Yitzira, which in a few short words describes the whole process of creation upon which thousands of my Marim are based, and all the writings of the Arizal, etc., much of his writings. And this is what it says there in very simple language the beginning, the infinite light filled all the space. Every, every word here is, is totally uh, needs to be unraveled. Obviously, because what does it mean space? There is no space in the beginning. What does it mean? At any rate, so I'm not going to address all the, uh, the obviously, because that's uh, the whole Siddhis is in this. But just to get to understand this word kav very simply, and we'll leave it at that. So this is what it says. So in the beginning, the infinite light filled all the space. Then God removed the infinite light, leaving a vacuum, and then projected into this vacuum a beam of light a curve, a line of light. What this is conveying is that the beginning is the Eir itself, and then there's the great symptom, leaving a Makam Cholo, an empty space. We don't mean this literally, not even spiritually, literally, Chas V'Sholem. The symptom is not to be understood. Kipshuta, we talked about this. There are four shittas of the symptom. The Alter Rebbe addresses this now in these, these days of, of Tanya, those who made a mistake and understood the symptom literally. They meant well. We're talking about uh, a great great Jewish scholars that misinterpreted the Arizal and this four shittas in the Tzimtzum. Mithrib explains in a famous letter printed in the Dada, look at the the four positions. The bottom line is the Altebe's position, which is the one that's now universally accepted. A, the Tzimtzum is not literal, and B, we're speaking about not essence, but revelation, manifestation. It's in the A, and it's not literal. So you've got, you've got four things to play with. Literal, not literal, tzimtzum and er, therefore hence the four shittas. At any rate. Yeah, so Hashem projects into this so-called empty space, this beam, this, this kav, kav means a line, and implied in the line is points, higher, or lower. And all of Ishtaushalas, as it were, emerges from this line, which is now graded godliness. Godliness that now inherently, inherently and now in its manifested state is limited. And once you've given rise to limitation, that, that uh, leads to what I'm looking for, not leads to further limitation. As soon as limitation is established, then there's less, there's more. So the whole idea of a ladder of divinity is put into place, which is what he wants. And the bottom of this ladder is so it all begins with this kav, this line, this projection of godly light into or through the tzimtzum, into and through the tzimtzum, piercing the tzimtzum in the words of, of Kabbalah and Chassidus. So what about this kav? Let's have a look at it. Do you imagine, Maim is, is, is lifting us 
as observers of the Kav. And the point, of the, the point of this whole study is not to become academics in the mechanics and, and the geography of Alikus, but the point of this all is to appreciate the Eish Meirab, the mitzvah that we do, the investor of God's very essence in the small minutia of the physical world on an action level when it's imbued and connected to the Anoichi Hashem Malikach. That's what this is all meant to inspire in, in, and, and elicit from us. Deeper, deeper appreciation of what is real and what is true and how we got where we are and what we are a reflection of. The whole objective is to walk around with chassidus in your head, which means godly awareness, hovering in the background. No matter what we're doing, the idea is hopefully that we are consumed with the maimer, consumed with the likus. That I would quote many times, and we read the story, Kusha Lepley was a businessman, and he was in the whole, uh, deal there, a whole contract, and the bottom it says, Sacha Kol, total, and he just he couldn't help himself, total, ended Movada, finished, Gamarno. Didn't have to drum that up, that, that feeling. It just, those words couldn't mean anything else there. Bottom line, in the middle of the business, bottom line, bottom line, ended Movada. Who is that? Reb Kusha Lepli, Kusil Lepli. I celebrated the famous chassid, one of the most famous chassidim in all of Chabad history, of the Alter Rebbe. Many wonderful stories with him. Okay, continuing now the Maimir. So Gam, the Maimir is probing even deep in Gam, Klolos Gidlo Yaakov, even the Kav, which is the very beginning of the process of creation. It itself is only like a hair. As we just defined earlier, it's, it's alive, but barely. It's the faintest, faintest expression of, of a likus, meaning the Abish relative to God himself. Kamayim, like it says in Zayar, Hai chuta yakira kadisha, this literally precious holy thread, which is another reference to the kav, to this line, this projection, this beam of godliness that projects downward, Metaphorically, the whole side of the dignity at Taloyan Bay, at all of the hairs of the beard, the divine beard, all come. This is the Gimel Tikkuni Dikna, the 13 uh, Tikkunim of the, of the divine beard, the, the 13 divine attributes. So it's all Taloyan, uh, 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 that, that all of the, the sorry, the, the, the uh, hairs of the beard uh, come from. Ikra mazel, it's all called mazel. It's a very cryptic statement, but the bottom, there was a quote because it says the word mazel here. It's telling us mazel means just, noisel means to drip down. As if a noisel min alavone, the water, the top of the mountain, but then all the way down is it gushes, but the bottom is drips, the little drops. So that's what mazel means. Something that drips down from a very high source. It's one of its meanings. So oh, mazel mean, oh, means that you drip down into your life. Taiv, a very high, good, wonderful uh, blessing. Does Talian mean connected? Dependent, or hung, literally, hash? hung, literally oh, hung. hung. So it's called mazel. But summary of the statement that the source of the kav is called mazel, which means even the kav, which is the very beginning of Ishtashalos at its highest level, that only comes from mazel, a, 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 a metaphoric dripping, tiny drops. Tiny reflection of a likus. Behind the fish, the because the kav comes through the tzimtzum. And so, therefore, the true being of God is totally eclipsed consciously from the revelation that follows of post tzimtzum. Yeah, we're following all of this. Yes. Continue. Like we said before about creation, creation b'chalal, with the biyash, achai, shebehem, humetzumtzum, that the life force invested is very, very small, contracted, 
If you show Malchus, gone Bishor Shabbat Shalom, because Malchus itself, which is the creative force, it's also the merest reflection. Likewise, the Kav comes from where? The Tzimtzum, Mazel. The same picture repletes. It's all relative. In the world of Ishtal Shalom, you know, there's higher, there's lower, there's extraordinary revelation, there's small revelation. But that was giving us, the, in, the, the, in, in all, in the big picture, in the big objective picture, it's all Asiya. It's all the mirrors, or the, or the mirrors reflection. So likewise, the calf, which is the very beginning of creation, that's loftiest levels, way beyond that seal, is the very highest levels there. It's all through the symptom, which means it's all like a mirror's reflection. That's because because we get some more Kabbalistic detail here, that the calf comes just like Malchus of Atzilus is the source of Bia, the Malchus de Insof, which is pre Tzimtzum, is the source of the Kav. Without going into detail there, you get the general idea. Shehi Shehesh Kav, it's Malchus de Insof, which Malchus itself is within the Insof, the concealment within self. That's what it means. Concealment within self to self. Shehi Shehesh Kav, that's the source of this beam, this light. And Malchus de Insof is the source of Malchus and all of the subsequent levels that conceal and contain. It is the Batanian, like it says in Tanya, Apostle Malchus, your attribute of Malchus is Malchus Kolilomen, is the attribute of all the worlds. Malchus is a reference. Your Malchus is Malchus de Insof, and this Malchus de Insof, which is concealment within self, which doesn't really conceal anything. It's the power of concealment, like Yechelis, potential. I don't want to elaborate here because it just will distract us, deflect us. But you get the idea that Malchus de Insof is the source of all the subsequent Malchus all the way down through all the worlds. Conclusion. This is all pre Aveda. It is all before he comes along with all his Kayach says, Yeish made up. Even after having, even after having. Uh, corrupted every dimension of his life, of Malchus, of the world, and Abish Shechina, in all ten aspects. Maybe it's not even even, maybe it's Dafka, but anyway. He says, Yehesh made Abba, and then not only does he fix all the blemishes, that's not enough to go back to the, to the innocent state. For that, the Neshama could remain above and remain forever innocent and pure and childlike. No, it's to bring down Yehesh made Abba into this fractured world and connected to as he did to, to the pre that the pre some truth of who Shmei Bilvad is explained at length in the previous ACS that be our experience in this world in the body in creation that's the Didalah Yisbarach and to be continued tomorrow or we should go further here we start at 8.15 to go on a little bit further yes please yeah Okay, a little bit further than the story. Omnam calls there who even said the Yishtaushos Kedushim Mitzad is Ayisavos. Everything we described till now is Yishtaushos as God created it before it comes along and does Avod. Avol Atachtesi Sheyumshach Gamagil the Bchina Shmei Hagodu. But the whole purpose is we should bring down the Shmei Rabba, the great name. The great name means that there, Lifne Yatsim Tzum in the Malchus Dein Tzav, the great name, is also the power of Gvul. There's also concealment, quote unquote, limitation. But that limitation is the pure expression of him. So therefore, it's, it doesn't remove him, it's united with him. Hashem can reveal himself in an infinite way or reveal himself in a contained way. And the objective truth is that where he's revealed, contained, and limited and descriptive, it's no less him than his infinite, unbridled light, the Eden Tzav. So who, Shmei Balvad, the Aliyah Sarotzen, even as he articulates ten Eulamas, and certainly who, the Etzema Eul, the Svidus in Ketz, it's all one with him. It's all Eidisht, finite, infinite is all him. So that's Shmaya Godel. So that, we have the Imam Sheikh, that truth into the world. 
the world should experience that in its own limitation. Its own limitation is him. Him in the sense that his choice to express himself that way. And Torah is the means to do this. It means in general, Torah, mitzvahs. Because Teira is rooted in Chachma, it's like a God's wisdom, but the, the root of it all is not Chachma that silliest and even loftier levels. But rather Chachma, the Atmos in itself, Chachma as it is one and, 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 and found as it were, as we're describing our Shmaya Godel in the very in the image to himself. So the kavan is to draw that where the pchinis asiya all the way down here. Kula machachma asisa. It's like a new type that we should draw down the chachma, the atmos in self in asisa. Okay, I'll just say the next statement, and and the rest the rest of the oys will explain. The gam amshach zua they akav. Now drawing down, you might think, okay, so what's the kavana? Is to bypass this whole system which is all finite and merely like symbolic of hairs and muzzle and all of the things we said, and then draw down Atma Sein Tzav. No, it all has to be drawn down into the cup. The question is, that's going to compromise everything. What have we accomplished? And how could it even happen? How can you draw down the very essence, unknowable beyond infinite God, through this cup, which is this finite graded beam of divine projection? The whole point is that it's limited and it comes from muzzle. And it's only a reflection. And the kav should be the means by which the mamshech atzma said himself. How does that happen? That will explain, Mr. Shem, tomorrow, that the mind will address tomorrow.